So I think we're gonna go and get started and I'll just kind of let people come in. Here comes John, excellent. Uh, I'm gonna um, ask Justin who made this evening's um, session possible um, to do the introduction for us. So Justin, if you would take come it away. Come on, Joe. All right. Good evening, my fellow Global Messengers and welcome to the inaugural edition of the 2021 Special Olympics glass light. Tonight's guest is Dr. Kuwait the Third. It is my great pleasure to welcome and introduce Dr. Frank to it to you this to, to you this afternoon. Dr. Tuit has more than two years, two decades of higher education administration experience and is Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer at UConn. Before coming to UConn, he was the University of Denver's Chief Diversity Officer. He has also delivered lectures, facilitated training, and conducted research in support of diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts in the Netherlands and Europe. In 2019, he received the National Association of Chief, of Chief Diversity Officers in Heiner Adrikan's Individual Leadership Award. He, he earned this for his his work to inform and 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 also of the understanding of diversity and inclusive in higher education. Dr. Tuit began his professional career at Wesleyan at Wesleyan. Harvard and UMass Boston. He earned his undergraduate degree from Connecticut College and has his master's and doctorate uh, degree from Harvard University. Professor to welcome. Thank you so much, Justin. Hello and good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. I can. Hear you. Oh, great, great. Thank you, Justin, for that warm introduction. And thank you to all of you for having me here tonight. I'm so excited to spend a little bit of time with you and tell you a little bit about the work that I do. As Justin mentioned, I, I, I went to school in Connecticut. Uh, I was an athlete. I played basketball and ran track. And after graduating from Connecticut College, I also coached. So I had an opportunity to coach track and field and coach for the United States Youth Games team. So I'm an athlete true and true. Uh, I just can't you know, do anything anymore like I used to. So that's been a transition for me. But uh, for the last 15 to 20 years, I've been working in higher ed as a professor and as an administrator. And I teach courses around diversity and inclusion and that also happens to be my job. I get to work with a great group, group of colleagues at the University of Connecticut across the institution, oh, trying. helping to advance diversity, equity, and inclusion. I got involved with diversity because I, as a student, I went to a place where I didn't see a lot of people who I could identify with. And my classes didn't offer a lot of opportunities to learn about my history. And so I began asking the institution, how could it improve its experiences for folks who look like me? And that led to me to want to get involved and work in higher ed. I had a couple of mentors who were really instrumental in supporting my growth and development. And they were professors and, and administrators. So I sort of wanted to be like them. So I ended up going back to school to get a doctorate and still continue to be involved in diversity. How far down is it? Uh, 
for the previous 16 years, I've been at, I was at the University of Denver, where I got to build a couple of different programs and initiatives that were really designed to try to create inclusive, affirming, and equitable campus environments where all students had the opportunity to become the best versions of themselves, regardless of what their prior or previous experiences are. So that's what I do at, at the University of Connecticut now. I work in the Office for Diversity and Inclusion, and I work with a great team of folks. We try to do a couple of things. We try to make sure that there's more diversity across the institution. So people of all backgrounds and experiences, we try to make sure that there's a welcoming climate within the institution that allows everyone to have the opportunity to achieve at the highest level. We try to make sure that there are opportunities in the curriculum for folks to study topics that are important to them and that prepare them to go out and be leaders and change agents in an increasingly diverse world. Perfect. We also provide training and development to our employees and to students so that they can do a better job of supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our overall goal is to make diversity and inclusion a really central part of the work that happens on a university campus. And that's a big goal considering that all that's been happening in society lately, the death of George Floyd, the ongoing sort of activism on campuses and in communities across the, the country, the desire for folks to have more access to better education, better health care. All of those things are things that drive why I do this work. And I will tell you that it's not easy, but it really provides a good sense of fulfillment when you're able to do something that helps to make a difference. So I appreciate the work that you all are doing to create community and to support each other. And that's really what diversity is about, building community so that people don't feel alone, isolated, that they feel what it, they have an understanding of what it's like to, to be a part of a community. Isolation can be a really sort of bad thing when you go to a large university like the University of Connecticut. And so we try to make sure that students have a place that they can connect and see folks who they can identify with standing in the classroom and read subjects and, and participate in programs that affirm their sense of identity. So those are the types of things that I do. Uh, diversity, I owe a lot of my own success to folks who engaged in diversity work. They were there for me when I didn't think that I could achieve. And they really helped to nurture and guide and steer me in the right direction. So diversity is about identifying people who are talented, but may not have figured out how to use that talent. It's about identifying spaces that help to build community. It's about developing programs that help other people learn about things that they've never had the opportunity to experience. It's about expanding our awareness of the diverse world that we live in and how other people in those worlds navigate the spaces they occupy. So diversity is, is so important. Inclusion is also important. Some of you may have heard that diversity is sort of like inviting people to the party. Inclusion is asking them to engage in some kind of celebration while they're at the party. And equity is everybody having a wonderful time. So that's how I think about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I, I think I'll stop here with my sort of introductory comments 
and open it up for questions, any questions that you have. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Why don't we start with Brittany and then go to Allie. Go ahead, Britt. Um, do seasonal, are seasonal allergies related to COVID? What's that again, Britt? Are seasonal allergies related to COVID? Uh, uh, Brittany. Brittany. Um, Professor Tewitt isn't that type of of um, doctor. Uh, Professor Tewitt. Not that because Professor he's Tewitt. at a college that actually helps to teach other the students at a college, which I kind of know because some of my siblings, which is my brothers, that uh, went to UConn, as well as my sister-in-law, because they went, because they went to as well and the nursing. So that's how they went to that college, also at UConn. Nice, nice. Did they have a good experience? Yes, they did. In fact, now they're working at Harvard, and also, actually, yeah, that's an, all three of them is working at Harvard. Nice, nice. Computers and helping other people vote in the hospital. Right. So, Brittany, yes, I'm not a doctor. Well, I'm not that kind of doctor, but I have allergies too, and I haven't thought about whether or not they might be related to COVID. So, if you find out, let me know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Frank, so, so I'm sorry. So, Frank, so um, I, I was going to, um, Ask um, with all the work that you've been doing, do you, do you deal with the patients that have COVID over there, and how do you deal with it? Yeah, so we are back in person on campus. We have um, five cultural centers that provide support to different student communities on our campus, and we've been hosting support programs uh, to build community, to create a sense of belonging. And we've been doing those those programs in person uh, under the conditions where they have to wear masks when we're inside. And we have to also sort of make sure we don't have too many people in the room. So as long as we can do those two things, mm -hmm. we can be inside. We have had some students who have, you know, tested positive. And when that happens, they get quarantined for a little while until they're better, but then they can return to to go in the classroom and participating uh, in our programs. Because I, I work at a, a, a nursing home in Shelton, mm -hmm. and I deal with patients that are like elderly people. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I'm like a community assistant. Is that right. a good way to prevent myself from uh, not spreading disease from anybody? Yeah, so continuing to maintain social distancing, like they say, wearing mm -hmm. your mask all the time, right? Right. And, uh, you know, continuing to to engage in, in, in safe practices like washing your hands and things like that on a regular basis. Because I just got my flu shot today over there. Okay, nice. Yeah, and uh, I'm kind of getting used to the needle being in the arm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Why don't we go to, to Aaron's question next? Okay. Uh, Frank, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt and everything. So no, now, no point, Aaron. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, you said you've been you've been at the campus for a long time and you've been you've been a you've been a you've been a teacher, you've been a teacher to all the students and everything else. So like showing them, showing them like ways of understanding exactly how, how to make a path though, how to make a path. And try and try to show them exactly what type of path they should they should go go through. I know I know you were talking about the George the George Lloyd verdict though. I, I think it was really sad that when we went through all that and everything else. So and I I was glued to that though for years though, like say for almost not for years, almost about a week or so. And I, I think I think I think stuff like that. For what what that person just did to him and everything else, so I think that that's good that we have history like that though, and we need to learn. We need to learn a lot of our, our history about our schools in the history about Black history, about how 
how we open up to people and showing them showing them ways to not do not do the bad thing and do and do the do the good thing like just doing it the right way instead of doing it the wrong way because we don't want that right now in 2020 in 2021 and 22. Okay. You're so right, Aaron. We need to take advantage of every opportunity to show people that we can we can live together in harmony and engage in positive ways that support each other. And you know, in my experience, most people are committed to doing good. There's mm -hmm. just a few folks who, you know, end up uh, taking things too far. And it was so unfortunate what happened in that situation. And I, like you, was glued to the TV for days, feeling really heavy from what was happening. And nothing can, you know, shake that from you, especially when you, you know, experience, may have experienced similar things in, in your past. And so that's a really tough situation to have to go through. But I'm often reminded that, you know, for every bad person there is, there are two or three good people out there who you could, who remind you of why uh it's important to give people a, a chance and to uh, and to model for people how they can uh be supportive uh to you so yes we try to teach our students how to embrace diversity how to be uh allies and accomplices that that show up when uh there is something not so good happening uh so you're 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 right on with that uh, we definitely need more folks uh, talking about history, uh, t celebrating the diversity of of different communities, and I'm glad to know that Connecticut has passed, you know, legislation that allows for their schools to teach about the history of of the Latinx community and, and the Black community. Uh, you know, there's some states that that are not doing that, and we're going to continue to push for it across the country. Uh, but uh, glad to see that Connecticut is leading the way. Well, that's a good thing though, because we we need it. We need to like we need to have other states push of histories because there's a lot of people right now who need to know their history, and we need we need to show people like us as with people with disabilities. Though I mean, we we didn't know anything about ourselves about our disability for years though, and when we went through a bad term with the R word and everything else though, and we didn't know what to do. So now as us, as global messengers, we've mostly spread the word and said, you know what, listen, enough's enough. We, we're, we're here, we're able to speak. We have, we have eyes, we have ears and we have a mouth and we can talk, we can talk though and everything else. So we can talk to people like ourselves here on these screens. And that's why we have to keep keep preaching to people to understand exactly what what history means though to all of us. And that's the thing that we need to, that's the thing that we need to work on. That is so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And mm -hmm. you're right. You have a voice, you have an experience, and you have something to share. Ouch. And absolutely, mm -hmm. we should all be telling our stories of success. And even using our stories where we've had some failures to help others learn how to overcome those situations. So telling your story is uh, absolutely something that each and every one of you can do to raise awareness about your experiences. Frank, I, you. I had the same situation where um, I had uh, my first experience learning on the job a little bit, but people helped me learn to overcome my fears and help me spread the word of things, just like what we do do with Global Messengers. We got our friend Debbie Horn to help us out with all these things. Absolutely, absolutely. She's, yeah. like, she's like a mother to us. <laughs> yes, yeah, she she's is. She's like a mother to us. Yeah. You know her. And they're awesome. All right, there are a couple of questions in the chat too. Maybe we could turn to those. Um, I think Nick sure. had one, but I kind of lost it. Nick, did you want to share your question yeah. with us? I think we lost Nick. Where is he? Where is he? I see him. <coughs> Where's Nick? We can, do you see Nick? Do you want to talk or do you want to? I missed Wait. it. There you go. Hi. He, 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 <laughs> he, he was is. on pause. <laughs> I, was, I was on pause. Sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> 
So, uh, with are you on the UConn campus? So I'm not on the campus right now, but my office is on campus. And so UConn has multiple campuses. I'm on the stores campus. There's also a campus in Waterbury. There's a camp campus in Avery Point. There's a campus in Stanford and a campus mm -hmm. in Farmington and a campus in Hartford. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And I think Chad wanted to know if you know if there's anything, uh, is there, are there unif Special Olympics unified sports going on on the campus at all? Do they have unified yeah, sports where they bring uh, people with and without intellectual disabilities together to play sports? So I would be surprised if, they, if there wasn't any. I'm just not aware being, you know, relatively new. Um, but I'm actually meeting with some folks in athletics on Monday, so I will ask that question. But at my previous institution, absolutely. And in Denver, I was not too far from Colorado Springs where the US Olympic headquarters is. So I've had a, had a chance to, to see some of the activities That's, happening out of there. Kimberly, I think you had another you question for, for Dr. Hewitt. And James has had his hand up. Oh, James, I'm sorry. Much. All right. Hey, hi. Yeah, meanwhile, <clears throat> well, um, I, um, this morning, we had a meeting um, today, talked about um, the artwork, and also we take a place, and everybody talk about clients, and we, it, what? Special Olympics, Connecticut, and I don't know where we act about um, the first language, our words, clients, and it takes a place, and you reach out to all Special Olympics, Connecticut, and committees, because I'm not trying to uh, do any way support, because the our words is very difficult, and, and all and we, we talked about that, and also I did talk about um healthy relationships, and they help maybe have um in a conference, maybe if a best Olympics have a conference, and then I mean all oh, together to all public managers, mentor, and give me a few ideas the conference, and try to help maybe. Put um, our team together, make it work together with each region, including um, and coaching also, and thinking about to like format like Fashion Olympics, like uh, 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 maybe a new head co coaching, and like that. And for me, I become a new head coach, and that's what I need help on that, and it, it's more than that. I've been doing this way back when I started. It was, was it 1986 mm. that day, and back then I do I do different sports over the years. Uh, you know, I had a swim team, track, and, and skiing, and now this year <clears throat> I'm looking for. I, I get on. Hey, Alicia. Oh. Thank Hi, you. Alicia. And I see I'm looking for a two new, new, new sports, boxing, okay. and okay. pole cart. Thank you. Uh, Frank, what type of tracks are those did you do? Oops, so I just wanted to let you guys know, Nick typed in that, and I and I kind of had some sense of this, but just to let Dr. Tewitt know, they do have a Special Olympics program That's at UConn, right, it's yeah. the UConn Outreach. Yep. And one of his buddies uh, used to run it and they do a three by three basketball tournament and the Smile Mile and the Husky Classic. So there's quite a bit of uh, unified sports going on the UConn campus. So yeah, thanks for that. Right, yeah. Great, great. So yeah. Um, I think, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So yeah, my question is actually when you were working at um, at UConn, um, did you look up to anyone like as a mentor? 
Yeah, so uh, that's an excellent question. So I was recruited by a couple of folks to take a look at UConn. Uh, we had met through a mutual friend and they yeah. knew that there would be some opportunities uh, potentially opening up and encouraged me to apply. And since I've been there, uh, they've been really supportive and, and encouraging and offering uh, their, uh, you know, to, to connect me with different folks. And so that's been a really good experience. Mentors always play an important, you know, important role uh, in, in, your, in your growth and development. Uh, you all have a, a, a great peer mentoring team here, it seems like. And from what I can tell, based on your comments, you have a great mentor in Debbie. So you all are in good hands. What was your uh, favorite track sports? Say that one more time. What was your favorite track sports? Like what sports you did? So I was in, uh, I, I, I did track and field. I was a jumper, high jumper, oh. long jumper. That's crazy. And yeah, I, I, I was in track and field myself though. Been doing it, been doing it for a long time. Yeah, and I ran the hundred and the four by one relay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. do those so did I. sometimes. So I did do I. <laughs> and how long have you been a doctor of philosophy for? So I got my doctorate in two thousand and three. Oh, so great! Almost twenty years. Good. Congratulations! Thank you. I think you. I think you should also have. Um, people that people with you like say talk to the board and like have like maybe like one or two global messengers show up and then like have them have them ask questions <clears throat> to us about what special olympics means to us and what and we can ask them like what is special olympics to you guys what brings what brings special olympics to connecticut and to other places because we've been growing, we've been growing Special Olympics for almost like a hundred years. Wow. Uh, we've been doing it for a long, long time. I'll tell you. Aaron, uh, I liked your idea. Maybe we can try to do a fundraiser with that. Well, sir, I would absolutely love to connect you if if you're not connected with other folks at UConn to make that happen. Absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. Alicia, now, do you got do you guys do like a healthy athletes program with your with your gang or not too much with that? Again, I'm I'm not very familiar with what happens on the athletic side of the house yet. I'm still trying to get to learn UConn. It's such a big a big institution. Oh, nice. Yeah. Alicia, well, we can always we can question? always help you. I I I I waited from my name is. As a Skowski, um, my essay also, I was gonna lay a sensitive about that. What do you do for your um, basically a big sports like swimming and basketball? I do play basketball. You that's, do? What I, that's what I played in college. I I do swimming also, and I do a uh, cornhole that will be started this year. Cornhole. That is really fun. That is really fun. Oh, that's your favorite? Yeah, because one of my coaches, um, Jay Zabinski, right? Because we can do the same edition as I said, the COVID just started of this year, of like last year, so we can't do like a different sport, you know? That's awesome. <laughs> did, I, did I say it right? Good job. Anybody that didn't ask a question yet have a question? Go ahead, Hi, Albert. Go ahead. Go ahead, Albert. Oh, I think you're on mute. Just unmute yourself there. We'd love to hear from you. There you go. W, doctor, All right. is there any plans to have a diversity day with UConn um, students and um, Special Olympics because I'm listening to all the stuff today and maybe it's time that um, the Special Olympics and UConn 
um, get together and sponsor a diversity day or diversity month for people with intellectual disabilities to uh, maybe go with Debbie or someone and talk about you know their experiences to um, to students because lots of students you know they may have a wrong impression of what people with intellectual disabilities can and can't do. And mm -hmm. if we, we get more people into the into the loop, we you you may have more volunteers and even more workers in Special Olympics and Special Ed. That is a brilliant idea. Amen to that. Yeah. yeah. Amen to that. No, no, like Amen to that. We have. One more question. Did, did you happen to know uh, a great teacher from UConn that I know from heart, uh, Dr. Elaine, um, Lorraine? Oh, I, uh, I'll, 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 I'll send you Dr. Dr. I forgot her last name. <laughs> She was working in the special ed. Dr. Lorraine Furek. Dr. Eileen Furek. That name actually sounds familiar. Uh, let me see. I'm going to have to think about that one. That name does okay. sound familiar. Yeah, because she's a good friend of mine from Hark and um, a couple of friends. And she. Uh, I happened to, before even going to um, work with Global Messenger, she and I did some stuff together. And uh, she, if we want to have a, you want to have a diversity day, you should see if you can contact her because she worked for you. I worked for UConn Foundation at one time and uh, there was a lot of people with uh, who are interested in our our group from Hartford, and they and we did some diversity work for uh, UConn and the students there, and and with Special Olympics. So I I have an idea. I'm actually teaching a class this semester. And I'd love to see if I could get a couple of my students to join you all at one of your next meetings. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Good idea. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Right. Maybe they can give us a couple of lessons of what they do with you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. That, 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 the idea too. <laughs> yeah. So I'll work with Debbie to see if we can make that happen. That'd be wonderful. Right. And I know there's some folks on the call that really wanted to be here tonight, but couldn't because they had other commitments. So we're going to make sure we're recording this so they can listen in too. And um, maybe we can catch them the next time. That would be wonderful. But what a, what a generous and thoughtful offer. And uh, I look forward to that and welcome that. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh. Justin, do you have any questions since you kind of were instrumental in setting this whole session up tonight? I'm just wondering if you have any uh, specific questions. Um, actually, um, hey, Kimberly. Yes. Um, why don't you tell Professor Tuit like how you work alongside with Special Olympics in your position? Oh, you mean as a health leader? So for a special... Yes. Okay, so for a special Olympus, I am one of the health leaders. And part of, part of my job is like, we're just starting a challenge. We're doing a showing up the special Olympus North America move challenge this fall. And... So part of my job was to recruit athletes to actually to be part of the challenge. And part of it is to um, keep track of our minutes of exercise. 
And for, as we're doing really well, we have a leaderboard that keeps track of like how many minutes we have been being active. And so far, we're doing really well. And, uh, and I really enjoy um, not just myself, but seeing other athletes these um with their with their partners or with their coaches that they um can be part of that and can actually help us with with that as well. And part of it is like we do what a fit five, we have special fit fit fives that we do. It's just exercising five foods and vegetables every day. And um, drinking five different drinks throughout the day. And that's for healthy athletes. Wow, very cool. Thank you for your leadership there. Thank, thank you. Can I ask you one more? If, 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 if it be don't mind? Can I ask? I think, what, what, what did you do for me? Can I ask? I can't see who's speaking. Who? Me. This, that was this, 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 uh, Alicia. Uh, that was uh, Alicia. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was Alicia. There what, you go. What Say, do you do for a living? What do I do for a living? <laughs> yeah. Can I ask? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, I teach. Oh, that's, that's I that's advise. That's all right. That's okay. Leadership across yeah. the institution. Oh, I work yeah. with students. Mm -hmm. I write books and articles. Wow, nice. We had a guy do that wow. one time, though, and everything. We had a guy who, who uh, wrote a book about us, and he. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I know what. Yeah. Wrote a book about us, though, and he told, and he, and <clears throat> he, and he put, he put all our names in and everything else. So, and I think that was really good, though, what he just did. I to still have that. inspire us and everything. I, I didn't get the book yet though, so but then I that that was really good that what he did to inspire it was, us. Um, it was a police yeah. officer who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. There was the that, yes. wasn't that James? Yeah. 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 Was James. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. That's what Aaron's speaking about. Yep. So Dr. Tewitt, let me ask, um, what are the ways that we as a global messenger team can help inspire and make our group more diverse and inclusive? Are there specific actions that we can take to achieve that? That is a great question. You know, continuing to reach out to folks as you meet them, as you, uh, you know, participate in activities or competitions, uh, as, you, you, as you come across new folks, tell them about the great work you're doing. Uh, I don't know if there are specific organizations in, in the state that you can partner with that may not be connected. That's another way uh, to find a partner organization that has diversity, more diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there are a lot of different things you can do uh, to, to spread the word. But, I mean, you know, you're a pretty diverse group already. So... Uh, but you can be more diverse, right? And uh, the more diverse, the more exciting and dynamic the experiences are. So, so I would definitely uh, encourage you to explore that. But I think the best way is to tell your story whenever you get a chance to tell people about what it means to be a global messenger, how you get to support each other, how you get to educate others uh, about what you do. Roger? Yeah, all of that will help to to increase the diversity by bringing new folks to the to the to the space. That's too. How I, can I, I get my friends at work involved with all that stuff? Yes, we said no. You can't go. Is there a special way I can do that? Yeah, so there are plenty of resources uh, that are available. You know, if you went to, for example. Uh, the Office for Diversity and Inclusion's website, there are resources and links to to videos and things like that. If you if you uh, you know, if you follow social media of any sort, there are a variety of ways you can access um, resources from uh, from the web. Uh, there are a lot of 
great TED Talks that introduce folks uh, to a range of diversity issues. So that's another way that you could, could do that. And you, you mentioned uh, sort of intellectual disability and disability work more broadly. There's a growing group of scholars who write about your experiences and how institutions can do a better job of, in, of creating inclusive environments for, for students with intellectual disabilities. So uh, there is a lot, a lot of work being done out there and connecting with those folks is a great way to, to get the word, the, work out, the word out. Can it be for like older people or younger people? Any all ages, age? all ages. Yeah. Oh, wonderful! Thanks. That helps a lot. I think I, I think we should I think we should do maybe in 2021 when things are over when things get over with with COVID. I think that we should all all as a little messenger community 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 <laughs> stores. I think that we should like do like a like a video like like showing people. No, no. Uh, who we are as global messengers for what we what we stand for, what we understand, what things we went through, what things we we've music. had, like our goods, our bads, mm -hmm. our truth, and and having our families back back us up, and having Debbie Horn back us up too, because she's been here, she's been with us almost forever, and we yeah. appreciate we appreciate no, no. her. She is like a mother and everything else. So she is like. <laughs> She's like the oh greatest, greatest person of all time. I just want to say that, though. Yeah. Um, but I, I love your idea. Like maybe at summer games or something, or when we start doing in-person trainings again, you yeah. know, to do that. Yeah. You know, a lot of you've been doing, you know, different videos to to promote events and get your messages across and everything. And you've been really good at it. So um, I think that's a great idea. That reminds me, when is summer Great winter idea. games for next year? Because that way I'll, I'll book with my trip to Florida. Yes. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> we'll get <laughs> together and go to like to get a building or something like that. You mean? Yeah. Jake, I see your hand up. Why don't you ask your <clears> question? Um, I, I want to say this. Stop <laughs> here about, um, oh, James, what? Okay. Oh, yes. One second. Go ahead. And we'll go to you next, Jake, Jake okay? Yeah, James. National Endowment. Oh, before going back to summer games, I'll make sure um, I start the training like race and speed and each different sports and make sure of uh, game plan, uh, strategies, and, and, and make sure of uh, the rules and also. Every time you have competition in swimming, um, because I'm at fast and, and back, back in 1986 in North Carolina swim team, I did a freestyle, I'm at fast and I got a gold medal. <laughs> and after that, <clears throat> and I was future on uh, special limit connected to all the athletes and the coaches and the coaches to help the whole team is thinking about for a game plan, strategies, and doing competition. Maybe a Saturday in game day. Game day means you need to stay focused and put a game face on. Win or lose, that's okay. In my opinion, the future is back to Olympics. I hope we go back to some games next year i think and, we all uh, hope that james right we all want to be yeah. at summer games in person thank you for that i love that that was great me too me too all right. I did, yeah, yeah, I, did. I, I, I did ask your question jake i know you've been waiting do you know when COVID is over in 2022 do you think we should have people bath out brochures and say thank you for your support in special olympics and do you think we should have the soccer qualifiers running back up into normal at um, UConn? And I know we missed that in 2020 and in 2021. So can you please describe that? 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I, I hope COVID is over in, in 2022. I hope so. I yeah, hope. me too. Me too, wow. seriously. Oh, yeah. And, like, you know, I it, sure, I'd love to see uh, folks back and in, in engaging in person. And you're asking about a specific award, it looks like here, the thanking uh, for support and passing awards at the games. I think any opportunity to celebrate folks who are supporting you is is a deed uh, worth doing. So if you can figure mm -hmm. out how to do that in a way that shows your appreciation for the support that you've received over these difficult periods, especially during the time of COVID, what an awesome way to, to thank people. I wanted to go back to the to the storytelling part because I'm I'm wondering you know there are some classes that do digital storytelling where they create opportunities for folks to tell talk about their experiences and that's yes. a potential another resource that could help to you know create a video that helps to get the word out uh, mm. you know it can't hurt to ask I, I'll see if there are or instructors that have courses coming up that might be interested in in doing something like that. Yeah, that would be a good idea. That'd be amazing. I got one more question to ask you. Um, you said you wrote books a while ago, right? Yes. Well, if you have copies, can I get a copy of your book? I'd love to read about your information. And Debbie can send it to me. Yeah, we could figure out how to get get the group a book or two. We can ask Yeah, cuz I love to read about your yeah. fascinating life there with all that you do. <laughs> I have to say I, I envy all you do and I'm very proud of what you you accomplished. Oh, yeah, me too. So we appreciate it. We appreciate yeah, you welcome. coming to us. I appreciate it, too. Quarantine's burned objects said to be distractions from You all are too sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be cognizant of everybody's time. I know it's getting a little later this evening. So, Justin, do you want to kind of um, wrap? Does anybody that didn't has ask a question yet? Does anybody want? I want to give everybody a chance. Logan, or I think I'm good. Everybody, okay. Dan, did you have a question this evening? Or are you good? Hey, Frank. I, I want to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. I write books too, and I write history. You like travel, history, people, and when you when you say my Yukon, and and I want my people back in Yukon, and did you relate it to the Yukon? Huskies game in sports? Yeah, I haven't been to a sporting event yet, but my plan is to definitely catch a basketball game and and uh, I may even catch a football game before the season's over. Yeah, true. Football's almost done, but the basketball is starting in November. Correct. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, do, you want to tell what today, do you want to tell Dr. Tewitt what today is, Dan? Today is my anniversary of Big Y. Oh. Nice! 25 nice. years now. Awesome. How many? Wow! Wow! Years. 25 years. That's great. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations, Dan. man. <coughs> Thank you. All right, Justin, why don't you... Uh, kind of wrap this up for us. All right. Um, Professor Tillett, thank you for spending a little bit longer time than normal to be here with us today. And I think that ever, all 10 of us Global Messengers should give Professor Tillett a round of applause for joining us today. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Frank. Um, yes. I have a question, Debbie. You also keep up the good work, too. If I had if you, I knew how to do a screenshot, I'd take a picture of all of you, but I don't know how to do that on my camera. 
um, from mine. Maybe <laughs> Dan, we can take a screenshot and send it to you. I promise. Oh, uh, hey, y'all. Hey. <laughs> there well, you go. Don't touch. If anybody has any additional questions, they can uh, email them to me and we'll, we'll get them to Dr. Tewitt. But I, I want to thank him as well. It's been a really, really inspirational, wonderful, enlightening uh, session. And I'm so glad that he could be with us here today. And I hope that we can keep in touch and, and potentially see him again sometime. <laughs> And Absolutely. Oh, yeah. like, I said, we'll, like I said, Frank, we'll, we'll we'll try to see you in person, though. So, like, whatever, whenever you have mm -hmm. your meetings with it with the athletes department, you have you have us right here. You All have right. us right here. Yeah. That's why we represent yeah. at Special Olympics. I so. appreciate it, Justin. I just want to thank you. You know, it, it takes a lot of courage to just reach out and and ask. Uh, you know, would you be willing to do? A, do something and you did yeah. that you demonstrated some really really cool leadership there and i want to thank you for doing that and creating an opportunity for me to meet so many wonderful and amazing people you are a true leader true husky in that spirit thank you so much guys give just a round of applause thank you for your support good job, really, really good job doing everything else well, that's a great way to wrap it up person. a perfect Please. evening thank you Before again good night everybody Good night, Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night.